So let's talk about intermediate coding challenge. First question, how many passengers were on the bus at the start of the journey? Right, so we received two arguments, number of stops, and then the passengers we got at the end of the journey, right? So to solve that, you, you said that at the end we got seven, but at the beginning, so for instance, let, let's I'd like to read that from right to left. So at the end we got seven. On the last stop, four people went out the bus. So that means that we got before that how many people we got here? Eleven. Eleven correct. But on the previous Eleven. step, so two people went out, but three people came in. So that means that we got 10, right? So in other words, so the result will be seven plus three. out minus in, out minus in, something like that, right? So let's plan that. So again, I'm going to try to do the return stops dot, not for each. I'm going to reduce, right? Because I want to get a number and then I got a, uh, total, and then stop, right? And then, so I need to initialize the accumulator. So what will be the, the initial value of the accumulator? Yeah. Seven. Seven. Oh. Zero. No, it could be zero, but I'm going to optimize ten, it a bit. Ten, the, the ten. Ten. The ten, no, final, final. Seven. correct, will be final, right? Because oh, yeah. that's what we got, we got seven. At the end it could be more or less than that, but hey, that's the, the initial, right? So then I'm going to, uh, so I got the stop. So I'm going to return uh, total plus, so it would be stop dot out minus stop dot in. Does it make sense? Stop, yeah, out. So that means the first time will be seven. So then four minus zero. So it'll be seven plus four, 11. So we're returning 11, right? On the second iteration, out minus in is minus one. So it will be 11 minus one, which will be 10. So that should be it, right? Let's try. Sorry, what if you change out to in? Well, if I change side to in, it will give me a different result, right? Well, of course. You see, it works. It's much easier than it looks like, right? We just need to plan it. How From the right to the left. Throw the laptop away. This is over. Well, <laughs> seven <laughs> plus four minus zero why plus three. Why isn't it out? So is it yeah, the but that's the thing, right? If they are out, it's because they were in before. That's disgusting. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's super easy, right? It's I'm yeah. actually offended. Right. So think about it again. This is the yeah. this is the end, right? This yeah. is the final. So we just need to keep. Checking what happened before, right? Every Keep single it time I saw that question, I was just like scared. <laughs> right? But you, but you, you, I mean, look, the, it's, just free, lines, right? it's just free lines, right? It's just free lines. That's what's yeah. difficult, is knowing where to start. Cool. Yeah, that's what I'm Capital consonants. I solved, this is the only uh, question that I already solved, to be honest, with the money. And I really like it because it, it's, here is where you prove how good you can break out things, right? If you think about the example, it's super easy. If you start typing like hell, you'll fail, right? So, right. so you got a string, right? And again, I, I'm going to be, again, I'm going to return something. So string is classic, right? So I'm going to split it. <laughs> I know that bit. They, they, they're doing the same thing all the time, right? Split. So I got an array of strings, right? Yeah. But I want to return an, uh, uh, another string. So I'm going to reduce because the size of the final string will be different. So, I'm not going to do to go to the reduce yet, but I'm just preparing, uh, prepare it right, and then, exactly, and then I join right. You see how I'm breaking the things? Split, reduce, mm -hmm, and then we join right. Okay, so then we can keep the focus. Look, at the moment, the example should be technically speaking valid, because if at that time you forgot to add like a parenthesis or something like that it will be very difficult once you've got 20 lines of code to see where the typo is. That's why I try to keep my test green, syntactically speaking, most of the time, right? Right, so reduce. We've got the accumulator. 
we got a char, so we want to see if a char needs to be consonant and needs to be capital. Okay. What is consonant? Consonant. It's not a vowel. Not a vowel. Yes. Correct, correct. So, okay, I could use a regex, but as, as I don't feel particularly confident using regex for this kind of things, I'm going to keep it easy, right? Should we, should we if you can use that oh. regex? So you be using it? What? That yeah, definitely. If, first of all, if you know how to use regex and your, your target, target audience know how to use regex, go for it, right? But the thing is, if you're the only person who knows regex, you'll fail communicating your solution, right? Mm -hmm. I've mastered it, by the way. How, how you spell vowels? Is that correct? Yeah. Well, uh, cool. Yeah, so it could be A, E, I, oh, cool, this is very advanced, huh? Eh? Right, so vowels. So, we want to do something. If, <laughs> if something happens, I don't know what, then I want to add the chart to the accumulator, right? And then I'll just return it. You see? So now, you see how I'm breaking the problem. I just need to be able to 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 construct this condition, right? And to construct it, because this is becoming quite complex, I'm going to create a new function, which you should do more often. The smaller the functions are, the better. It will be easier to understand. So then I'm going to create a function called is capital consonant. So, right? So then, I'm going to create another function. Function is capital consonant. You see, and now the only thing I need to do is to create an if else kind of to see if the char if is a consonant or, or not, right? Uh, and actually, I'm going to move that vowel thingy to that function. Right. So how do I know? First of all, uh, will only contain letters and spaces. So it will be capital consonant if it's not a space. So if it's char is not space, that will be the first thing, right? So let's, let's add a few conditions. So the first thing. Uh, no, I'm going to return it. So I'm going to do return, right? And then all the conditions. So what the conditions are? So first of all, char is not a, a space, right? And what else? So char is not a vowel. How do we know if char is not a vowel? Doesn't it cross left? Includes. So Justin got it, right? So vowels dot includes char. Exactly. And what else? It's capital. How do we check if it's capital? Yes. If char uh, equals 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 char to uppercase exactly you see so we're checking char is not an empty char, sorry char is another space it's not a vowel and it's, it's a capital right that's really pretty much it just know that this uh, the tokens the capital consonants should be separated by a hyphen so on the join yeah, you have to, yeah. you do that if right you want to change it Vowels to capital vowels. Uh, that's a good thing. You that's a that's a good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you could not. You must. That's a good thing. Thank you, Albert. Because if I do that, the capital O will be added, right? Yes. Um, so to do that, I want to normalize it. So what's my vowels? It's lower cases, right? So let's compare lower cases with lower cases. You see? I know that char will be a lower letter, either consonant or vowel. But in that particular case, if it's a vowel, yeah, it will be discarded because it will be part of that array. That may work. Let's, let me have a look. Reduce accumulator. If it's a capital consonant, then push it, right? And what's capital consonant? If it's not a space and it's not a vowel, and it's, yeah. It's, here? Uh, yeah. So we just return and then 
That will be written to force, right? I don't know what you're talking about. What? That? No, yeah, if we have a comparison operator, it, it returns. Yeah, but, but listen, every, every operator is a Boolean, right? So this will be true or false. This will be true or false. And this will be true or false. So it's capital consonants if it returns true and true and true. As far as one of them is false, it's not a capital oh, consonant. Right, so let's test it. It works. Cool. See, my only issue with that was I just felt like it was so long. So long? Yeah, but it, but it just yeah. was like, you had to write a lot of code. Yeah, it was a like a lot, of, a lot of code. But you didn't get the capital O because you forgot to do that, which Albert noticed, right? If you don't do that, at some point you will be comparing capital O with lower O. I mean, worst case, you could write capitals the same uh, for the vowels. You just write capitals as well. Yeah. Well, of course, you could you could add five capitals to the right hand side, right? I don't see there is any point of doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Third question. This is probably the most complicated one of the challenge, right? I'm using regex for that. I don't need Get consecutive chains. So you got a. Uh, no. Guys, we're recording that, so let's try. If, if you have questions, just raise your hand and let's let's talk about them, right? So get consecutive chains. So we got a string of numbers. I want to break it into an array of numbers, yes, with the consecutive tokens. There are some ways to do that. I'm pretty sure if you search on Google, there will be some amazing ways to, to solve it very quickly. But I'm not going to go on that route because, again, that may go against readability. So let's keep it easy. So again, the same thing, right? It's always the same thing. Retor string. I'm going to convert it into an array because then it will be much easier to loop and to inspect, right? So dot, oops, dot split. And then, I don't know what's in the middle, but eventually <laughs> join, not probably join. not join, because we want to return an array, right? So I, I don't know if we need to join it or not. Okay. We want to split it. And then we want to return another array with a different shape. So will you use map for each, reduce? Map. Map, I disagree. Reduce. I will use reduce. Map will make sense if we have, for instance, to multiply every digit by something. That would make sense. But in a particular case, we got an array of one element, and we want to return another array of multiple elements. We definitely want to change the, the shape of the data model. So, yeah, of course, with map we could do it, but I would feel more comfortable using reduce, because I have more freedom, right? Shouldn't we use map to transform numbers? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yes, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are right. So I agree with with uh, Christian. So as we want to compare numbers, these are not numbers. We just got an array of charts. So I agree on that. That's a good thing, uh, Christian. So we got map. We got a chart. What well, map number? Right. Let's keep it easy. Yeah, that's Constantine style. But that's good, right? I like it because it's, it's readable, right? You split, then you got an array of numbers. So then I, what I get is an array of numbers. So reduce. Uh, this will be a number. So I know that I want eventually to return an array, right? So because of that, the default value will be? Anti-array. Anti -array. Thank you. Thank you. Oops, not there, right? Probably not. Yeah. Cool. And now this is the tricky part. That's the tricky part. Because we need to look after a few things. So I would like to create... You see, we receive, we expect to have one array of multiple elements. But each element is a string, right? One, two, three is a string. Five, six, seven, eight is another string. As I would like to keep adding values, so I'm going to create internal arrays. So in the first example, I'll have a multi-dimensional array. So the first dimension will be two elements, element one and element two. But the second dimension will be another array. So one, two, three will be an array. Why? Because it will be much easier to add elements. Uh, you'll see in a minute. So 
Right. So the first the, 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 the first iteration index will be zero. So let me let me do something. And I'm going to return the accumulator. So if index is zero, I'm going look at look at what I'm doing. I'm going to do accumulator.push because accumulator is an array, we need to push. And then look at what I'm doing. Index isn't. If there is no index, right. or if you prefer, if index is zero, which is the same thing, right? Then it's the, it's the, it's the first number, right? Number one. So definitely, I want to push it. But instead of push it into the accumulator, I want look. You you notice that square brackets? Yeah. So I'm pushing an array inside of the array, and you'll see in a minute why. Right. Else. If it's not the first one, let's see if the numbers are consecutive, right? So we can do, we need another if. If, no, I want to see if the numbers are consecutive, right? So I can do if number. Index, why index? Because that's the next number. I want to check the number but against what? the previous one. Ah, okay, so you are operating on the next. Ah, th this number. Yeah, exactly. Ah. So on the first iteration, that's it, that's one. It. But on the second, two, I want to see if two is consecutive compared to one. Yeah. So how do we do that? Number is two, so how do we access the previous number? Uh, index minus one. Index minus one, no. Why? Because that will tell you the index, but I don't care about the index. I care about the number on that index, on the previous index. Yeah. Number like that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wrong. No, we, we wrong. Pass an, pass an array. So exactly. Constantine is right. We need to pass an array. So if we pass the array, this is the array that got received here, right? Mm -hmm. So if we got the array of numbers, then we can compare. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. You see? So we'll see number uh, equals equals equals. Plus one. Plus one, something like that, right? So then we, we, we see we say hey, is two equals to one plus one? Yes. Yes. If that's the case, I want to add that number to the very same array we got here. Mm -hmm. How do we know the where this array is? Well, it's the last array we got. So we could do act the accumulator the push, but then uh, let's give me a second. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. I have to set a variable. Yeah. So I need to access to that array. So let me. I'll. I'll, I'll think about the naming afterwards. So chain equals accumulator of accumulator dot length minus one. So do you know what I'm doing here? So I'm accessing this array. Why? Which because is in the accumulator. Yes, correct. Because it's in the accumulator, so I'm accessing the last array inside of the accumulator, mm -hmm. right? Which is that one. As I got that, then I can do chain dot push number. But why do you want to push into the same array? Well, because they are consecutive, right? So if they are in the same oh, yeah, array, yeah, then yeah, I could yeah. join oh, them. I see. I see. Right. And then, what, what, what's the, this is the last scenario, right? But so by pushing, you are pushing you another number. array element. I'm pushing the number to the chain. So what's the chain? The chain is this array. So essentially, originally, I had an array with number one, but now I have an array of number one and two. One and two, yes. Two elements, right? In that particular case, if the numbers are not consecutive, what I want to do, look, I want to do that again. If the numbers are not consecutive, I want to add this comma. I want to add another array to the accumulator. Mm -hmm. And we'll start again, over and over. Right? But we are not ready yet, because if we press the submit button, we'll have, assuming this logic is correct, which I'm not 100% sure, we'll have 
What would we have if we press the, the green button now? Numbers. No. Array of arrays. Array, array of arrays, exactly. Array of arrays. We have array of arrays. The, the structure hopefully will be correct, but we want an array of strings instead of an array of arrays. To do that, exactly. Now we can use map because it's much easier. We just want to we want to keep the size. We have an array of two elements. We want to keep the array of two elements. But instead of having an array of arrays, we want an array of strings. You could use the spread operator, yes. But I'm not going to do it. But yes, you, you could do it because definitely that's we, we want to. Yes, you are right. We want to spread right What's from inside map. That's what I want. I want to make it easy, right? So to make it easy, so we got the. Actually, for consistency reasons, look, I'm going to call it accumulator. Um, so then every element of the accumulator will be a chain. So I'm going to do chain dot join. Oops. Something like that. Right. So what I'm saying here at this stage of the journey, I got an array of the arrays, an array of arrays. OK, no problem. So then. Uh, sorry, that's. That's uh, like that. Right? So then we doing map, I'll receive an array of numbers. So I want to transform each array of numbers into just a string. So originally, this would be an array of one, two, three, an array of three elements. I just want to transform it into a string, right? One, two, and three. Should we try that? It works, right? I mean, this is probably the most complicated test in the uh, in the challenge, right. right? But again, it's at the end three cases. If it's the first number, push it. If it's consecutive, add it to the same array. If not, create a new array. It's all about thinking on the structure. To me, creating an array of arrays was a good approach. I'm sure there are others even simpler and more elegant, but hey, it works. No, uh, what I did, for example, I, I just. Uh I just push the empty string. Yep. So, so we, yeah. where we have break empty string, and yep. then then you can uh, split. Split. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That could be even simpler. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Constantine. Right. This is yeah, this is very simple, right? So everyone manages to do that. Add negative numbers, right? So map or reduce. Right. So let's convert it into pure numbers first, right? So numbers dot map number so then because the originally we got an array of strings and why reduce constantine because we want to reduce we want to, to get total exactly we want to get total right every time you want to get a total reduce is perfect right so reduce reduce what so we got total and then the number right what's the default value of the accumulator Zero, correct, right? So in here, we want to return if the number is negative, right? Yeah. If the number is negative, then then yes. Use the number. Well, add it, right? Add, add it to the total. Correct. And if not, do nothing. Do nothing. What do nothing means? We need to return something. Return zero. Zero. Like total plus zero. So, well, that's total, right? Total plus zero yeah, is total. Of course. Right? That's it. It's very easy, right? So, map number, reduce total number. So, if number is less than zero, then. So what map number does? Map number transforms. Into the number. But Correct. why don't you use an empty argument after number? Because this is a shorthand of doing that. It's the same thing. Ah, okay. So you just have to yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is probably more readable, but once you've done that a hundred times, probably mm, okay, you're not okay. doing the opposite, right? Let's try that. It oh, it doesn't work, right? I've done something wrong. Return, you don't return it. I don't return. Yeah, I don't you return. Don't return. return. You, turn it. Function you have to re return it as a string, not as a number. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's read the error. Yep. The error says nothing return. Yep, return, yeah. Right? Let's read the errors. <laughs> Still wrong. All ah, right, you see, that's, that's a typical ex example where something is wrong, right? 
I expect minus three. That's true. Correct. But I, I sending a number, right? Number, yeah. So you just have to two string. Two string. Convert to string. Oh. I mean that's okay. why. Let's try to do two string. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what's that? To string. So that you return a number, and in the example, they expect you to return ah, okay, a string okay. rather than a number. Yeah. And you could. You have to. Yeah, you could have use a string surrounding everything, but this is probably more elegant, right? Because it works really well with a chain of actions. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you, guys. Question. This is the last one, and uh, yeah, that was the second most complicated one. Even though that should be relatively easy. So hard switch. So we had we got hello Codery, and we want to do Codery hello, and even changing the case, right? So again, let's break it down. So I'm going to return. I want to access the keys of that object, right? So you know that we can do object dot keys object, and then uh, I want to use reduce again because I want to return a different structure. So reduce. Now we have an array after object dot keys object. We have uh, an array. Correct. We have an array only of the keys. You are completely right, Christian. So we got the accumulator and that's the key, right? And this is the complicated bit. So let's think about it. So what will be the default value of the reduce? An empty object. We want to return an object, so let's initialize it, right? You are right. Cool. So I'm going to ignore the case problems, but in reality, what we're going to do is well, we want to return the accumulator, so before we, we forget, hey, it's there, right? But we want to do so let value equals object of key, right? That would, that's, that's the value, right? So if that's the value, then we can do accumulator of value equals key. It's as simple as that, right? We are swapping the key with the value. But the problem is slightly more complicated because then we, we want to change the case. To change the case, I'm going to create a function to change the case, right? Because I need to call the function twice. Mm -hmm. I need to do the same thing twice. I need to change the case for the keys and for the values. Mm -hmm. We can change it afterwards with the reduce again, no? Mm. We can but, change but, it. Mm, uh, but, but then you have to do again object.keys. I want to make it at once, right? Yeah. So then we do function change case of a string, right? Let's keep, let's keep it generic. Mm -hmm. Change case. So how do we change the case? Let's use, again, the same thing. String, return. I don't want to forget it again. String, dot what? Map. Map. No, split first, right? Oh, yes. And then yeah. map. And then take a function. Yep. Or with an if statement. Take if. a function. So return. Return. If char if char dot no my. Well, you see. It's not a case change the Exactly. Ah uh, yeah, but I thought you want to check whether it's a smaller case or capital. Well that's what I'm doing, right? If it's a small case, I'm uh, yeah. going to return to uppercase. Otherwise, to lowercase, right? And of course, let's don't forget to join it. Otherwise, we'll return what? What type of data will we, will an array? Thank you. Exactly, right? So return uh, char equals char to lowercase. Then move it to capital. Otherwise, move it to lowercase. Yeah, that, that should work, right? Cool. So then we need to just call that method twice. So the value, look. So the, you see, the value will be the change case. And then on the, with the key, it's the same thing, right? We need to call it again. Does it make sense? We are changing the case for the key and for the value, right? All right, let's see if it works. Mm -hmm. It works. <laughs> what? <laughs> but you see, it, 
it's, it's not complicated at all. Probably the, here the important bit is try to break down your code into smaller functions because that will help you a lot to see where the problem is, right? Mm -hmm. But like I, I, I did that, but it, it was I uh, instead of just doing it with the string, I had yep. another function switching. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was much more cool. Okay. Yes. I tried to do it inside with reviews. So just yeah, 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 yeah. I've, so I've seen that as well. But, then, like, yeah. but you see, reality is quite simple, right? If you break it down into a couple of functions, cool. That was it, guys. Thank you. Thank you.